I can't wait for you to hear from today's guest, Marcus Higgs. He's worked with kids from around the world, all different age groups. Right now, he focuses as a communication coach for parents of preteens. Whatever the age of your kids, I know you're going to benefit from this podcast because he talks about really developing a great relationship where we can be a present parent and have open communication. He uses a framework he calls show up. And we'll talk more about that today during the podcast. But he is super helpful regardless of the age and the relationship you have with your child. I feel like it can always get stronger and better. And you're going to have some big takeaways from Marcus. I've got a question for you. Who's the person you're being? Are you satisfied? It's okay. This is a judge-free zone, and it's exactly why I started the show. Welcome to Be The Person, a podcast for the brave and the curious who are ready to explore who they are fully created to be. I'm your host, Annie Randall, the adventurous one leading this investigative journey of transformation. By delving into topics and asking unexpected questions, we will discover the keys for unlocking our true potential and being our best selves today. You may be surprised by what you find when you let go of fear in order to discover the answers of becoming the person you were made to be. Welcome to Be The Person podcast. Thanks for joining today. We are in for such a treat. We have Marcus Higgs with us today. He is a communications coach for parents of preteens. And when I read his bio, I was so excited to talk to him just to get his perspective on how we can be the best parents. And so welcome, Marcus, to the show. Thank you for having me, Annie. Thank you for sharing your platform. It's wonderful to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about you and how did you get into working with, I know you've worked with preteens, teenagers in all different countries. Can you tell us a little bit about that? All right. The origin story. Here we go. (laughs) Yeah. I'm a third culture kid. Are you familiar with that term? I'm not. Okay. It can mean many different things, but usually it's where the passport doesn't match the country where the kid grew up or it doesn't match... Um, how the kid identifies or his parents or their parents, right? And when I mean how they identify, I I taught in Thailand and some of those kids, they went to an international school their whole life, but they were born Thai or they're Korean by passport, but like they grew up in English. And like, so it's a mix of cultures. That's what it is. Third culture kid usually is a kid who has just many different cultures. My mom's from the Philippines. My dad's from the Bahamas. And I was born in California. Gotcha. So I grew up in California. I I grew up in California until I was 12, moved to the Bahamas, came back to university, studied communications, journalism, straightway went to South Korea, where I served as a missionary English teacher and did that for five and a half years. My worldview shifted and no animosity towards the church, still had a relationship with the divine and so on, but I love teaching and I love teaching. So I continued being a language teacher, got training in Thailand, taught in Saudi Arabia for two and a half years. That was an experience (laughs) with a petrol company. And uh, then came back, got some more accreditations in Thailand, taught in Spain. Then I came back to Thailand again for seven years. And now I'm here with my aging parents in the Bahamas. And during that time, I worked as an English teacher, a high school English teacher, English language arts for high schools and then a short time for fifth graders and sixth graders. And you look for how can you contribute to the world? What does the world need? And what can I do for the next 10 years? This is what I want to do. There are other, there's the whys that make me cry. I'm going to share this book with you. You can't see it, but this is the goodbye book by my fifth and sixth graders. Well, And it's filled with many stick figures with little afros that they oh, it's so precious let me show you here you can't see that on the podcast because of the blur 
but the whole idea is, yeah, if I can hold on until they start to have their kids, I'll make the impact that I want to in the world. So yeah, there will always be kids and working, the quality of your communication is directly related to the quality of your life. That's what my communication teacher taught me. And that's what I want to do. And it makes such a big difference. The quality of communication, parent to teenager, and even before where you really focus makes such a huge impact that I think you're, you are going to make that difference and change so many kids and parents' lives and relationships. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We say a line that I often share with clients is, be mindful of the voice with which you speak to children, for in time it becomes a voice with which they speak to themselves. So when we speak of communication, remember, it, yeah, it is outward, but it is also inward. So now, thinking about... To my first question, because... As we, as I was telling you, we have three teenagers right now. And when we grew up, we had great parents, both of us. But in our relationships, we didn't talk a lot growing up and definitely not about conflict. And so when we got married, that was one of the things we were terrible at conflict. And so it came into our marriage. After a lot of work, I feel like we got much better. And so one of the things we're very cognizant of with our kids was we really wanted to be open with our kids and we really wanted to have that communication and good relationship, be honest. And I will tell you, based on how we were raised, it's been a challenge, even though it's been something we've worked on. Do you see that from other parents? Do you get that parent, I guess, how you were parented? It's interesting when I read that. When you said we didn't talk about, oh man, these are my words. I said we didn't talk about, not emotions, but conflict. Or how did you word it? Yeah, I would say conflict, but definitely emotions too. Like I was yeah. uh, terrible at communicating emotions. And you said we grew up good. And I thought about that. And I was thinking, Brene Brown speaks about, how you're familiar with Brene Brown. I am. About how they didn't talk about certain things because what doesn't get mentioned doesn't get managed. And now in relationships, in communication, there's always conflict. Conflict is noise or anything that creates miscommunication or misalignment. It doesn't define the relationship. What defines the relationship is how we manage the conflict. And when we don't talk about it, for me, I think that is not healthy. We become well-adjusted to something that is not healthy because think about it. Everything that grows must first break or go through resistance. That's one of my understandings of human development, of life, of anything that's flourishing has to go through an effort towards resistance. Now that conflict is but resistance. It's, that's all it is. When we start to mention it and talk about it, we start to learn how to manage it better. And if we frame it as this is leading towards growth, we start to have a healthy relationship with conflict. We know that we can seek support or we can look for skills. Otherwise, we just clam it up. Yeah. And I hear you say, it's been a challenge. And to which I say, yeah. you're growing. And because we were mentioning this before the podcast, uh, but for the joy set before you endure, <laughs> to take, to take a, a verse, but know that there's something greater on the other side of all of this a refining of yourself, of understanding of what it means to, some people say the greatest act of love is to give of yourself for something outside of yourself. I mean, that's what love is, no? That is seen in parenting. So it is challenging. Yes, I, I agree with you. Now, do we parent the same way we have been parented? Yes and no. The only, only reason I say that is because we all live in the biggest room, the room for improvement. And oftentimes when we look at what our parents did, we, we are here to do them one better. Yeah. Ideally, we're here to improve on the generation. Also, life happens and we give it meaning. I'll tell you this quick story and then I'll, I'll open it up <laughs> for us to talk. But there were these two kids. This is just a, a parable, okay? But there were these two twin sons in the city. They had an alcoholic and abusive father. And he would come home, do what he does and so on. And they both grew up. And the father died, and both sons stayed inside the same county. One went on to follow in his father's footsteps, be abusive, and find his 
bliss at the bottom of a bottle. And the, the other one went on to be a part of the community, part of uh, civil service and so on in an upstanding character, let's call it. And they were asked, how and why did you turn out the way you did, considering who your father was? And they both gave the same answer. Did you know who our father was? How could I have turned out any other way? So that just comes back to say, your past adversaries are not your future destinies. Like, it's Carl Jung. He says, I'm not what happened to me. I'm what I choose to become. So there's always agency to, to step into growth. Step That's hope. Step Finding your agency to step into something greater. So do we parent the same way we parent our, as our parents? Yes, and let's do them one better. Yeah. So good. I love that answer. I love the parable as well. So I think it's shows that yes our parents definitely have an impact on us yeah. but we yeah. have maybe a whole different impact on our kids can i just make one quick point and it just came to mind yeah um this from dan siegel we're not going to be perfect in our parenting or there's going to be a kink in the armor and i think that's by design that's a function of life not a bug reason being when we figure out what that thorn in the flesh is or that kink, we then improve on it. You said our parents didn't talk about emotions or conflict or so on, and you chose to do that with your kids. Do, do you see how that caused you? Like you flipped it and said, okay, I'm going to empower you with this. Now there's something that you're going to be deficient in with your kids. Absolutely. That's for you to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, we all live in the biggest room, the room for improvement. But that said, you're going to grow holistic kids or kids who are going to thrive and be their best when, when you show up and yeah, we can pause there. Yeah. yeah. So good. And maybe that's where we go next, because I know that you have an acronym for show up. And when I was reading it, I think I told you this. I just love that because that's something I tell my kids a lot in life. Like it's, you're going to win a lot of that fully showing up as yourself. Because a lot of times I think we can play it safe and not show up. But tell us a little bit about that acronym and how you use it and what you do. Yeah. But, but before we get to the, the acronym is the show up framework. It's how to nurture your preteen preteens potential. Yeah. Right. Even if we take it out of the context of the acronym, for anybody listening to this podcast. See how the show up framework relates to you in your life. Because really, this is about human development. For the show up framework, if I could start off first with the problem, right? Absolutely. Now, preteens, they're going through their first major identity breaking. In life, when we go through a transition year, those are the formative years of when we start to redefine ourselves of who we are. When preteens are going through this intern, and when they're entering this adolescent phase, right at the start of it, they go through three things and they set up an ice wall, I call it. That ice wall is I, identity breaking, because they're transferring from a child into an adolescence. That adolescent, right? Mm -hmm. And there, there are all these expectations. It's just like, who am I now? How do I fill this role that's expected of me? If to just speak that a little bit more, they're growing up with maternal energy that's pulling them closer, saying, you're loved, you're cared, you're nurtured for, I support you, you're seen in your suit. A natural thing that we do is we turn away to form our own identity, and there's paternal energy also pushing them away. And that paternal energy says, you are loved, you're cared for, you're supported from afar as you do this independently. Now, that tension creates a holistic adult, like, we are to be independent. They were dependent, they're independent. The final stage is interdependence when we start to link together. So first we're going through their identity breaking. Second is collaborative mistrust. They don't know who to trust in, in this stage of life. Because think about it, everything that you said was gospel. It's black and white. And then now they start to experience other perspectives or views of the world, be it through peers, um, other adults in their life, or through the internet or so on. And they start to mistrust you. Now, the thing is, 
they don't know what nuance is. And so then they're just like, well, can I truly trust mom or dad? Let me explore these other things to get an understanding for myself. The third thing is there's emotional mismanagement, ICE. So it's identity breaking, collaborative mistrust, and then emotional management. Emotions, they tell us what we want in life, how we're moving towards it, our subjective well being. And everybody has emotions and it gives them a barometer of how they're navigating this life. This is their first rodeo. So they're not really familiar at how to really use these things of emotions. So that's all going inside their head right now, right? So what we have to do is we have to show up. Uh, before I go on, are there any questions or anything? Or did I frame it up well? Well, I think that all really makes sense. And I'm envisioning my own kids at that age. And I could see those things happen. So I think that's a great, uh, I love acronyms. So I think that's a great acronym. And all three of those make sense. Yeah. And it's a visual wall, right? It's an ice wall. <laughs> it's cold and it's just like, let me separate. Oh man, I'm thinking about this now. In the show up, we have to show up as the sun <laughs> to melt the wall. And what the sun does, the sun just is. It is faithful. And I call it a trustworthy present parent, right? Because I work with parents of preteens. I don't necessarily work with the preteens, but what I do is I work with you to be integrated, for you to be in integrity. And that's by one S it's start with a strong identity. All action is taken from your identity. And even in saying start with a strong identity, I mean specifically virtues and values. And those have definite definitions. Virtues, are you familiar with virtues in action, VIA from positive psychology? I'm not, no. Okay. VIA is, this is found in all cultures, all religions, all ancient cultures, all Modern day science. These are things, the 24 are such as humor or leadership, creativity, perseverance, and so on. All of us have all the virtues. There are five that are expressed the most, depending on the context, right? I, I really believe these are the things that make us human, the expression of these virtues. Because what virtues do is they work for the well being of ourselves and they work for the well-being of others. So everybody has these virtues. When you navigate life looking for them and highlighting them, that's virtue spotting, and that feeds into our bonding, our connection, right? Yeah. Values are simply what's important to you. That's it, it's just what's important to you. When you have your identity based on your virtues and values, you know who you are and you know what you want and you can navigate life better. And start with a strong identity also means have a family culture because all culture is collective identity. So what is it that your family has an identity? Then there's your neighborhood and then society and then the small circles and groups that you are part of. But start with a strong identity. Second is H, hold space for collaboration. When kids are going through their dysregulation, they often think, what's wrong with me? And as a parent, there's that contention of blah, 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 they're yelling because they're not meeting our expectations. Whenever somebody's not meeting your expectation, it's only two things. One, they don't feel supported, or two, they don't have the skills. The idea is, hey, nothing's wrong with you, but something, there's a challenge here. How can we think together and collaboratively solve this? And there's a framework to do collaborative problem solving or supporting them in becoming more autonomous with solving their problems, critical thinking, and so on. It always open up communication. Again, I'm a communication coach, so there's different approaches and different ways in which we can literally open up the communication with the kid. And we could share some more of those later on. And then W is wonder and explore the world together. Using our virtues and values, happy people have projects. That's from Sonia Libermirsky. What is it that you want to give your efforts to using your virtues and values that you uniquely show up in the world as like Angela Duckworth does with her family over a long period of time. What is something you're going to commit to making an effort towards to teach grit and so on. And you do it together as a parent and as a child so that they can give you something to talk about. This is the project I'm working on. How's that progressing? 
this was the project you were working on, yeah? And then that's how you UP, unveil your potential. And the whole idea is you are being, if you will, a more exemplar or a trustworthy present parent is what I call it. As you set the expectations, the guidance and the rules and regulations with your kid. Oh, really great. And one thing that stood out to me as you were sharing that, as a parent, I think it's important for us, and would you agree, to show up, you said, with virtues and values, to really know who we are and to have done the work on ourselves so we're not projecting something else on our kids, that we're strong people. I hear you say that as parents. As I told you, I study human development. This is what we, this is what would, this is what would save the world. This is how communities develop. This is how, again, very simply, I promise to take care of me to be in service to you as you promise to take care of you to be in service to me. Three quick quotes, or not just three, two. One is that there's no greater privilege than to be who you are. There's no greater privilege than to be who you are. The second is the duty of privilege is absolute integrity. Mm-hmm. That's by a guy named John O'Donohue. Like if you have special rules for you, you have to be integrated. You have to be together. You have to have your stuff together to be in service to those who are dysregulated. And the final one is when your story is told, let them know it is a privilege to hear your story. They're not going to see the whole picture of mom or of dad, but later on in life, they're going to get it. It's just like, oh yeah, I, I see how they kept it together for us. Yeah. So, yeah, I I totally agree with you. Um, Yeah. (laughs) One other thing, question for you, and you mentioned it on open communication, because I know this can be a challenge of maybe it's that ice wall that you talked about earlier, and it's our job to melt. But one thing I know, it's been a challenge for us as parents and a lot of parents that I know is how do you get that open communication with your preteen or teen? Maybe some yeah. strategies or ideas on that. <laughs> Something practical we could work with, Marcus. <laughs> I, I heard you say it's our job to melt. I would actually even say, uh, I really say no, but I think it's not our job to melt, rather to create the context for it to emerge from them. That's the etymology of educate and parent. It means to bring forth. Now, how do we do that? Oftentimes people close up because we feel judged from the outside looking in, right? Here are three ways that come to mind. I'll share two of how to pass on your virtues or values without being preachy or to create that space. The first one is me, we, then you, right? When you're speaking with your kid of a challenge they may be going through, well, first of all, try to schedule it and give them a heads up so that they don't feel ambushed or it's out of, right? And in opening up our communication, there's something called you time, which is a, a, a minimal time in which you check in with your kid, creating a space just for them, where they sit with your attention. And you say, whatever you want to talk about, it could be five minutes, could be something that's ritual so that um, there's regularity around it. Could be drive home after the soccer match. Like you always stop by Orange Julius and just get this thing for us to have some chit chat time, right? Yeah. So that's you time, just creating some regularity of which they know I can be fully present with my parent. And it doesn't have to be long. Could be five minutes, could be 10 minutes, right? Or a walk around the block once a week, right? So that's the first thing, creating the space for it to actually flourish. And think about it. You make time for the things you care about. If you have a spiritual life, you have a prayer life in the beginning and at the end of your day and in between. If you have a partner, you make time for your partner because you care about their relationship. So you make time for your kid. Now, during that you time, I said it was me, then you. You, If they're going through a challenge that you've experienced, kids, they love that they, or not even kids, but people love to know when another person can identify with them. You could speak about how you face this thing as a challenge. And then what you do is you speak about it as we of shared humanity. Of oftentimes, this is how humans manage this problem. And then, again, we're making it very general as opposed to being specific to them, say, what are your thoughts on this to invite them into the conversation? That's opening up for you to actually get where their thinking is without assuming what their thoughts are. 
Oftentimes we drop the ball by making an assumption of what's going on inside another person's head. We really don't know until we actually ask them. And it's worth noting, kids are just starting out inside this game. They're often making assumptions of what's inside our head. So that's why we have to be explicit, especially if we're speaking towards, towards their virtues and values. Where your attention goes, your energy flows. So if they know, oh yeah, mom and pops are always talking about this stuff. Maybe that's what they're thinking of when, I, when they're not speaking to me. All right? One last one that I can say is one last tactic on which to open. Cool. And the third thing is taken from how to speak so your teenager will listen and how to listen so your teenager will speak. Are, have you read that book or seen that book? I'm familiar with that book. Yeah. So the idea is to write a letter for your preteen or teen. And again, I've gone through this with a... Uh, clients using chat GPT, but put it in your own words, again, noting their virtues and values of how they've shown up because you're finding evidence and examples for the identity you're trying to have them see, right? But however, at the end of the letter, at the bottom of the letter, say, and when you're ready or when you need to bring this letter back to me and you will have five minutes or 10 minutes of my undivided attention, no matter what, no questions asked. And then you put it in a sock drawer or somewhere they can find it, or you can read it out loud to them. The thing is, you're banking or you're making a deposit to say, you have my attention when you want it. It's like a mag 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 what is it called? Mulligan? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but now it's in their hands and they know when I'm ready or if there's something that I feel I can't come to mom or dad with, I can take this letter to them. And it's now sitting in their psyche. You are supported. That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So so that's another way to give a chance for them to open up the communication even before the moment arises. I think that's powerful just to open that door and to give that opportunity so they know it's there. I did it with a friend. He told me he moved houses. And it wasn't my letter, but he wrote a letter with his daughter. And there were teardrops on the letter when they moved houses and he found it. He said, what is this? He's like, yeah, no, I've cried on it before. Yeah, yeah it's powerful. That is. I love the framework. My favorite electrolyte drink is Element. It has magnesium, sodium, and potassium, all things that your body needs to replenish. Oftentimes, electrolyte drinks taste sweet. That's because they're filled with sugar, dyes and chemicals. I put a link in the show notes for you to check out Element so you could try it as well. I'm sure there are parents listening of uh, preteens going in thinking, I'm going to do those. I'm going to do some of those. But I'm also thinking we have uh, parents listening that maybe the relationship is broken or it's not, maybe not broken, but just not exactly where they want it to be. Can you speak to that and any ways to repair or advice that you would give those parents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you were lost and you had a map or a GPS, what's the first thing you need to do? Put in, I think, where you want to go. You know what? That's not the right answer. <laughs> that was a good guess. That was a great guess. And actually, yeah, you do want to put in where you want to go. However, you have to be honest of where you are. Yeah. yeah. And you can't go anywhere if you don't know where you are first. And that's why I say all growth starts with truth. And when we start with the truth, one of the difficult parts is some people, it's hard to own what they're responsible for. Some people, you're not responsible. For, you're, you're not the cause of it yet you are responsible for correcting it. And what I mean by that is you're the adult in the room. That's the thing about it that comes down sometimes. It's like you are responsible for, for setting the tone as the adult in the room. That said, do not feel overwhelmed because life supports those who support life. We're, we're not meant to raise kids alone. Actually, scientifically, it's called allo parenting. There's a book called Mothers and Others. 
but we raise kids in community. We need other trustworthy present parents or other trustworthy present adults, be it their teachers, their coaches, aunts and uncles, family members, and so on. You need to find those trustworthy people. You need to be those trustworthy people as well. Next thing, after you start being honest and start being truthful, and you may need to get perspective to do that. The next thing is trust is built over time. And it, it, I would need to know more of the context as to say how and why it's, let's say, quote unquote, broken. I am a hopeful person knowing that as you start to tap into your agency, your ability to first hold a better vision of the future, knowing that you can actually get there. The next thing is what is the next one step that you can start finding progress? And that's how progress is done from anything, right? First, believing that you can repair this, uh, this relationship, having a plan to do that, knowing you have, and then taking the next step towards it. That, that's very general. I would need to know more specifics about it, but, but it can, one last thing, find evidence and examples of other people who've come out of it. Yeah. And I think that's so helpful because you're right. Sometimes we look at where we're at today and we look at where we want to go and it seems so far, but we get there by just taking that next step. What is one of those things? And maybe looking at your show up acronym to think, what is the one thing I can do today? What is the one step? In that I could do to help this relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now there is a way of building trust because it could be the trust is broken. To build trust, again, you show up and that's what the framework is for. Understanding your role as the adult in the room. And, and you know what? I, I do say this. Your child will, may go waywardly or in a way that you don't wish. That's why I work with parents of preteens. The person I'm named after, Marcus Aurelius, he had a son named Commodus, which he went a whole totally different way. And we could have this conversation for another time, but I, I think it's because Marcus Aurelius, he, he didn't show up in a way that would bring forth Commodus's potential. But anyways, that to the side, I'll have the conversation with historians. <laughs> but I work with parents because what you're really asked for is for you to make an honest effort to be integrated yourself, to know that you did your best. And it's a hard pill to swallow, but I wanna give you the best chance that you have of keeping your stuff together to show up for your kid, yeah. And ideally your kid will come back in time. That's what I can say on that. I think so good. And we talked about as parents, it's important for us to show up as to know who we are with our values. And in a world where this has been one of our family projects, honestly, in a world that's telling our kids to be a lot of different things, they're hit with social media and TV and video and friends and all the things it, that can be really hard to get, I think, kids to show up and know their values, um, have a strong self self-esteem. Any uh, like thoughts on that? And what would you tell parents in order to maybe just give them, I don't know if it's strategies or thoughts on how to do that for their preteen or teenager? Yeah. For me, I'm very intentional on forming an image of who are you? Because I think this is what life is doing. Life is continually asking us, who are you? Mm -hmm. From a very neutral point of view. And it's waiting for us to express that. Like, like, tell me who you are. Now, as parents and as um, members of the community and so on, working with kids, I, there's a bias, there's a leaning, there's a personality, there's a character that I am. And I'm sure of who I am because, of course, I journal on that, I reflect on it, and I live it, and I, that's who I show up in the world as. The way we do that is by giving them space to explore themselves. And to just circle back to the idea of social media, I forget her first name, but 
she has a movie called Screenagers. You can look it up on YouTube, but it's talking about social media in this day and age. And there was a recent study of how kids are forming now their identities outside of themselves. They're seeing these peers or other people on the other side of the screen, and now their identities are likes or causes. And because there's this whole narrative that's happening in this other world, right? Okay. Yeah. However, and that's why I, I love working with families before kids are launched out there, but really establishing a family culture, mapping your family culture so that, yeah, you, you are going to, you are going to have be a remix of this. You're going to do this differently, but understand people like us do things like this. And actually that's the definition of culture by Seth Godin. That's one definition. When we look at a, a company culture, people like us do things like this. When we look at a community culture, people like us do things like this. We continually break away from cultures and then form our own and find our own way. But when you establish that deeply of, I want you to be you, but you have to tell me who you are and giving them the space to express that, the, the problem really comes when we say, I don't like who you are. It doesn't match me. How gracious could we be? And me, I'm just asking a question out loud. It's a question that every parent is going to answer in their own heart, in their own house. How gracious could we be to allow that person to be who they are? While also us still saying, yeah, I am who I am. And this is how I will stand advice and just giving, encouraging that as a parent to your kid and giving that space and then giving that grace is, is really impactful. I think one thing in, in a lot of instances, cases that I've seen is when the other person knows you have their well-being in mind, um, it goes a very, I think it goes a long way. So you can hold different values from me, but if I know that your actions are for my well-being, like, thank you. And that's what, that's, that's a recognition of love. And it's like, yeah, no, no, we, we hold different values, but I see what you're doing is in my well-being and okay, I, I get it. Yeah. So good. I feel like we've, we've talked about a lot and maybe just to sum it up, if we have parents out there listening, I think our end goal is to raise kids that are happy, healthy members of society, they go out there and they are independent. Any last advice? I know we've talked about a lot, but there's still a lot more room for things you, you haven't shared. Anything that you'd like to leave with us that we haven't covered? Oh, so much. I'll, I'll say this. Remember when I said there, again, this from Dan Siegel, there's no perfect parents. There, there are going to be ways you're going to fob it up. You're going to mess up. You're going to drop the ball. You're going to fumble. I, I, again, I think that's a feature, not a bug, because when you repair and reconnect, that goes a long way in building the trust. It shows that you really do care, right? Ernest Hemingway says, life breaks us all and some are made stronger in the broken places. When you yeah. rupture something, and you, as again, as the adult in the room, say, this is what I did. This is not the person I want to be. This is what I'm going to, this is what I'm promising to do going forward. That sets the tone of, <laughs> that sets the tone of, we live into our virtues and values. This is what I'm doing and because I care. This is what I'm going to change going forward. So know that you're going to mess up yet. No. Making the repair is actually where those points are earned back. Yeah. Mark, I think that's so powerful because we all want to be this perfect parent. We don't want to mess it up. But the fact is we're human and we're going to mess it up. So I think what you said of just owning it and repairing it and saying who we're going to be just sets such a wonderful example like for our kids going forward. Yeah. We become my being. And I hear you say yeah. we're only human, right? As if we're going to mess up again, though, 
we're human and we're going to mess up, meaning we're going to grow. We're stress progressive. Yeah. That, that when those moments happen, because we're human, we can expand into it. I think that's the beautiful thing. Absolutely. Such a good way to look at it. I can tell already from just our conversation, because one, you have quoted several books and <laughs> you <laughs> do a lot of reading. Is there one in particular or maybe a couple that you love? It's how I love to close. Um, yeah. Mm. I, I used to teach lit literature arts, right? English language arts. The Breakthrough Years by Ellen Galansky actually just came out. She did nine year research and she's inviting teenagers into the conversation about like, yeah, well, dude, the, the teenage years, the preteen years are years of ex explosion of energy of just figuring out. And if it's when you bridle it, it can be directed in such a way that's beautiful. So it doesn't have to be burdensome, right? Um, so the breakthrough years, I believe it's called. Another one is 14 conversations before you're 14. Michelle, I forget her last name at the moment, but 14 conversations before you're 14. And what these conversations are, they're not sex, drugs, this. They tell you about how to have these conversations, big conversations that open up, that open up the conversation. I, I like how to talk about bigger issues. So I like that book as well. Anything Dan Siegel writes, The Power of Being Present, um, Whole Brain Child, um, his work on actually just human development, because really what I do, I said to you, <laughs> what I do is speak about human development for this specific age. But um, those two books were good. Yeah, I can link to those. And I think, honestly, those are a couple that I'm going to get. I'm very interested in those. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you sharing that. And I can tell you're a wealth of knowledge and love literature and books and all of those things. Our words create our world. Yeah, the word is love. Spread the word. <laughs> Tell us a little bit. How else should people connect with you? Because I think we'll have people that hear this that maybe they want a coach for their preteen or they have more questions on how to do this. How would be the best way to connect? On LinkedIn is the best place to find me of where I post regularly. I'm not so much on other social media channels yet. But LinkedIn and then MarcusHiggs.com, I'm there. I'm going to start doing some workshops of mapping our family's virtues and values, that first step. MarcusHiggs.com and LinkedIn is the best way to get in contact with me. Okay. And I'll make sure I put both of those in the show notes because I think it is such valuable information. We are caught in a world, and especially as parents, that is just busy and we're dealing with the day-to-day -day soccer practice and dinner and all of the... But if we can take a step back and really figure out our values, our virtues, and use the framework that you have set aside of show up, I think it will be so tremendously helpful in setting those relationships. So I appreciate all of that. Thank you for sharing your platform. Thank you for your gracious listening. You're a wonderful host. Thank you. Thank you. And if this would be of value to anyone, please share out this episode. When I came across Marcus, I just wanted to get him on the show right away because I know being a pa parent of teenagers can be challenging, but it also can be one of the greatest rewards and can be so much fun. Well, Marcus, thank you for joining us today. And always, if you would give a five-star review, it would mean the world. Have a great day.